you knew this video was coming. Crab Tendo. What is going on guys? So I know a lot of you guys are into this whole one shot thing. I mean, one shot production has been around for quite a while. Again, a big advantage of using one shots versus using VST plugins is that you save a lot of CPU. And then there are other capabilities that you have with using one shots that could overall influence your production into something very different, which is necessary these days or just needed. Uh, but I've already did a video on Pass Shop 2, which I hope you guys have watched that video. I wanna compare that to FL Studio's great sampler that it has and also to like Serato Sample and a few other one-shot samplers that are really good that can do some things that you probably didn't even know about. So let's go ahead and check them out and leave a comment below and let me know of your favorite that you use that I may have not have showed off in this video. All right, so I wanted to use FL because it has one of the best, if not the best, uh, one-shot samplers in the game. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this sound here. Uh, I had the same MIDI for all of these channels here, so you know, don't have to worry about anything sounding much different from the other. And of course, I'm gonna use the same sample here, which is this. And we're gonna talk about FL first. So, damn, so this is a really good one. So one thing I really like about this is that it is native, so that means you can use Edison, and I've been using Edison forever. So what I did there was highlight the endpoints here because I don't want that. Uh, what I'm gonna do is press Control X, and then now the sample is trimmed, but to get this sample back in there, I will drag and drop it over here uh, using this sign right over here, just in case you missed that. Uh, and I wanna go ahead and play it, close Edison out real quick. And uh, I'm gonna play that uh, actual MIDI file. Uh, but you'll notice a couple of things that, you know, is kind of thrown off about the sample. It does sound good, uh, but if it was to play at different pitches, it wouldn't be so great. So to counterbalance that, you probably use crossfade and crossfade will do this. And it tries to do its best to kind of translate it, but whatever. Uh, you also can normalize it. And this is one of the things, you know, I, I did as, as a child to an adult uh, with FL. And, you know, you also have a new feature, which is an FL 20. And the reason why I like FL 20 is you can, uh, do the start and end times. You can select the start and end times, so, which has an overall effect. Uh, but you, if you don't like crossfade, you know, you have uh, the envelope here, but crossfade is just uh, more or less if you want to use higher, higher pitches. Uh, but most people, they just use the envelope over here. And that will control uh, basically your attack sustain release and all that other good stuff. So. Uh, other thing I really like about this is the fact that you have Apigios built inside. And that is just fantastic along with uh, different echoes, delays and stuff like that, which I won't mess with because uh, of what I'm gonna show you a little bit. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is show you a cool trick that a lot of people don't really talk about and that is layering. And that's as simple as you going into like uh, either insert or replace, right clicking on that channel and looking up a word name layer. So if you look up the word name layer, uh, what you can do is you can layer your one shots too as well. And this is how you would do it in NFL. You can layer as many uh, one shots as possible. You also can layer different third party plugins with this too as well. Uh, if you do, do the things I'm going to show you. So uh, what I have here, I'm gonna go ahead and play these two together. <laughs> Uh, but see, the thing is about that, uh, that I want to show you about layer. If you go over here and set children, you hit it, it will tell you no channel is selected. This layer will then be linked to nothing. So what you want to do is select the layer. So you will click on one of your channels and then you'll click on another channel that you want to use. And then you would set children. And what set children will do is when you go to the layer, it will play both. So that is really cool, right? Uh, you also can do make it random. You can do fade, cross fade. And you also can uh, show the children too uh, with that is associated with that layer. And that is crazy, right? I just wanted to show you guys that because I, I want to, you know, be that guy. But yeah, that's a really good, useful tip uh, for anybody. So I'm going to go ahead and mute these because I don't need them anymore. And I'm going to go to Serato Sample, which is another great tool for one shot. So I'm going to go pull this up, boom, and I dragged and dropped it in there. 
Uh, Serato Sample is a chopping tool, but it also plays one shots as well. So you, to be able to do that, uh, you would have to go on your keyboard and hit like your root key C. And then once you hit your root key C, it will set up a start point and then go over here to poly. Uh, so you can play polyrhythmic notes, of course, and then you will set up your key group, which it automatically sets up. And if you play it, then you hear it. So. So it's not natural enough uh, to what I want it to sound if I go up to uh, different pitches. Well, actually it sounds better than uh, FL Studio Sampler. Uh, and that's one of the things that I do like about uh, Serato Sample. But if I go back over here uh, to the sampler and one thing I do want to show you is that they have resample, but they also have time stretch too as well. And when you go to time stretch in uh, the FL default sampler, let's hear it. So it plays the uh, full sample in its, in its proper perspective uh, to its respective speed instead of it going faster in pitch. So back over here to throttle sample though. It still sounds a little better, uh, but you know, there is a, a way that you can work around if you don't have sort of sample. Uh, and you know, this right here uh, can be manipulated by messing with time stretch. So I'm going to hit this uh, half, half it down to 70, negative 75%. So it can play longer. Turn up the volume on it. And remember, you can adjust the start point over here at any given time that you want. Uh, well, this will be canceled the start and end point here. Let me mess with the start point here. There we go. And I can just uh, actually have this right here. Hey, whatever sounds like natural to you, you know, just adjust it accordingly. Uh, you also can zoom in and, and see what your starting endpoints are. Uh, that's one thing uh, I wanted to show you. You also can do reverse too as well. So, so if you want to do that and you want to adjust the attack because it's coming in too hard, uh, you can. You can do release too as well. And you can do filters. So it's really good. Also, one thing I want to point out too as well, if you are chopping up loops or something like that, it does detect the BPM and the key of the sample too as well, and you can adjust it on the fly. So that's one thing I really like about Serato Sample over the other ones I'm going to show you, uh, and that is what makes it special in that regard. Uh, so let me go ahead and mute that. There is another one. Uh, I know this one right here might be way, nobody probably knows about this one. And this is Renoise Redux and good Lord, do I need to do a full video on this? So I'm not gonna go into detail over here. You could drag and drop stuff just like in every last one of those, uh, but you can't see the sample. So you had to go into editor and now you can see the sample over here. Let's play it. Uh, make sure that I... And you can actually hear that the quality is much different than Serato Sample. And Serato Sample has really good quality, but this has some stereo quality. And now you have, uh, depending on what the sample is, it'll pull up stereo or mono, uh, but you know, you can adjust this uh, by uh, just, let me go, if I, well, anyway, so you can just press Control X to chop stuff out. I mean, that's just normal stuff. And you can hear it, of course, you can hear it again. Let's hear it, if it will play. <laughs> Uh, you can also add in loop points and stuff like that. Uh, it says no loop, and then you can uh, set it to ping pong forward, boom, boom. And and then you can set it uh, again over here in here. And I, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not trying to rush, but yeah, it's a lot of plugins I got to talk about here. Uh, but yeah, it's really cool. Uh, you can set up different modulation for it, and it, it's a very huge deep dive. I want to go in another video. Uh, you can also use uh, samples, I mean, use uh, effects. And you have different effects from multi-tap, mixer EQ, of course, reverb, uh, and some other obscure ones too as well, like repeater. And let me go ahead and do repeater. Let me take out multi-tap. I don't think that's gonna sound very good. 
Uh, I don't think <laughs> we'll we'll find out. Let's go and play it real quick. It's a repeater here. Yikes. Uh, but yeah, it's thinking. Oh my god, like this right here, man. I got to I got to deep dive. But anyways, that's that's moving forward here. Uh yeah, really good. Um, really, really good. Uh we also have this right here, uh, which is Falcon. And Falcon has a sampler in here, a granular sampler too as well. Uh and it can be accessed by going over here into your top part, and then uh there are some default uh, different devices that you can use so you have this IR cam granular and what you would do is you would drag it into your key group and then you'll see it but make sure that you stretch this key group out uh, stay tuned because it's gonna get really deep in a second <laughs> that's what uh, he said uh, but anyways <laughs> uh, we're gonna pull up this afro flute and we're gonna put it inside of the sampler here and now it's playing a little different notes here and I do know that uh, but you can adjust the pitch. Uh, that's close enough. But anyways, yeah, you could do that. And what you can do is you can tap and go into your sampler here and, you know, trim it the same as you would with anything else. And you can mess with like jitter. I'm just doing this all real time. Pitch variation. Mess with the position. You can change the loop mode. Forward and backwards. Backwards and forward. Uh, you can change the grain size. And that's not the only one that you can do. Uh, you can do um, one called uh, stretch. And this is where, again, this is where things get a little deep uh, because you can keep on dragging on your key groups here. Uh, mind you that uh, I didn't show you in, Re in Redux that you do have key groups as well. So you can actually, yeah. But uh, in here you can do key groups, uh, dragging another sample, of course. You can do this over and over and over again as much as your CPU can handle. And then just start doing all kinds of crazy stuff with that. And, you know, this is where this kind of separates itself from others. Uh, you can also do uh, some different uh, stuff with your ADSR, of course. You know, your amplitude, that is, you want to make it more of a... Uh, you want to make it more of a pad sound or whatnot. You can do... Uh, different LFOs, you can drag and drop your modulation, of course. Yo, I almost forgot about this one right here, which is Iris 2 by Isotope. Uh, this one right here was given away for free last year, free. Uh, the only thing I don't like about it is that it is pretty CPU intensive if you have a very, very low powered CPU computer. And I had a low powered CPU computer at first, but uh, let me go ahead and play the audio. Let me uh, lower the uh, BPM here. I did just, there we go. And you know, what you can do is you can focus in, trim it. And you can add effects and stuff like that. What I'm gonna do, oh, and you can layer it up to four times. Yeah, you can layer this up to four times. Uh, also, you have master effects too as well. Uh, if I want to do like reverb or something like that, I guess I had to turn it on to make it work. This is very spectacular. And one reason why I like it is because it saves the wave file, no matter if that person has the wave file or not. And you can just, uh, you know, you can push those presets out, you know, just in case. Uh, I wanted this particular plugin to jump. I really did. As you can see, it is granular synthesis. And you can apply all kinds of stuff. So I don't know in my video that I did if I actually went into detail about this. So I might just go and do a detailed uh, review on this. 
uh, altogether. But I have done a video on it, and you also can uh, change the way that you shape uh, your grains. It's really good because it's a special analyzer, uh, much like a lot of Cubase's stuff. So you can really uh, get in there and and just start dialing up what you want. And you also can apply like different envelopes and, and different controllers to it, uh, which makes it uh, a whole lot detailed. Uh, I wish I knew the price. Let me go ahead and find out the price of this right now. Yikes, uh, <laughs> it's 149 right now. Wow, uh, but I have seen it go for like 40 bucks. It was given away for free and people slept on it. I don't know why, because goodness gracious, when I see a tool like this, <laughs> I went and bought like a $10 plug-in and got me a $140, $150 plug-in. But yeah, this is dope.